Um, we'll lay this in between the marks and hopefully this will work out where I can just set it down and unroll it, keep it between the marks here. Let's see. Okay, good. I'm going to try to get these garage door seals in. It rained three and a half inches yesterday in two hours, which is very unusual for us. And uh, <laughs> I really need to do this for lots and lots of years, but you can see the garage floor is just covered in moisture. This was soaking. This is all solid water in here um, this morning. And uh, it, you know, it's rusting my steel. I can't leave anything on the floor. It's kind of a pain. Um, so <clears throat> the problem is not that the door seals on the bottom of the garage door don't seal. It's that so much water builds up right here because the door lands right here. And this space right here slopes into the garage or is basically flat. The actual carport out here, starting here, slopes away. So I have this ridge where water just sits. And even if it's a light rain, water comes flooding in. So snow melt, if the snow builds up here and, and melts in the winter, it uh, ends up in the garage. So we're just going to get these seals in. And this is a universal garage door threshold seal. Here's what it looks like. It's got some ridges. This part goes to the inside of the garage. This line, I'll show you where we're going to line that up uh, when we go to install it. This is what your actual door closes against this right here okay so here's a better picture of it right here the garage door closes down on this flatter part and then there's the ridge which goes inside of the garage and then there's these little kind of traction ridges i'm not sure what those are for but in any event i'll probably trip over this and break a wrist but uh because i'll forget that i've installed them but this will really help uh keep this moisture down in the garage that just keeps collecting every time it rains okay so they say lay the seal out and go ahead and trim it where I'm trimming it is right here. <clears throat> Basically, you line up this yellow line here with the outside edge of your track that the wheels run in. Okay, and that'll be pretty close. And I'm just butting it up against it. I thought about going ahead and notching this right here and then putting it past all the way into the track, but um, it looks like I'm going to get good coverage here. I'll go ahead and build up some... Uh, silicone right here or some kind of sealer um, but on the other hand I wish I'd gone a little bit further and just gone ahead and notched this and put it inside the track the wheel only comes down to right here you can see where the wheel stops that's where the wheel stops so there's a little bit of curve in the wheel down here because it's round right but I don't think it's going to go down so far it's going to hit this okay so we'll go ahead and trim it and then we'll close the garage door on it okay so what I'm going to do here is line it up so that this yellow line is consistently across the bottom of the garage door. Now, is my garage door straight or not? I don't know. It doesn't matter because even if the garage door is crooked, the seal kind of needs to match that, right? So we'll push it in there so it matches. We'll pull it out there so it matches. Okay, now it says go ahead and make your marks. And you can see I've already made marks in here. I got it nice and straight. So I'm just using a black Sharpie and made intermittent marks. They say to use a pencil and just go ahead and mark the inside and the outside and here's the glue i'm using this is the gorilla brand heavy duty construction adhesive it, it, it adheres to pretty much everything masonry granite marble wood fiberglass plastic painted surfaces bricks tile aluminum concrete that's what i want concrete uh and so we'll put three layers of three ribbons of this down and then we'll set um our thing in and then i'm just going to close the garage door on it and use that to hold it in place I was going to bring in like a piece of wood and lay it across there and mark, you know, make a piece of wood and then set it on here. But this has got to sit for 24 hours. This is supposed to be fully cured in 24 hours. Maybe it doesn't have to stay that long, but I'm going to just close the garage door on it and leave it until tomorrow. And uh, that way the garage door will hold it hopefully perfectly in place. So here's the front of it that kind of describes what um, the positioning of the threshold looks like. And look, they even put water right there like there's a big flood. Well, there is sometimes, right? Uh, and so here's the directions on the other side and they're real simple and if you do want to read these directions You can just pause it. I'll kind of slowly go down this So obviously I swept this with the broom um, I even wiped it down with MEK um, just to make sure there was no oil on the cement and uh I'm just going to slide this back over here. If you flip this over, it just wants to roll back up. So, 
and it might be a good idea to you know keep it inside uh, where it's not cold or set it out in the sun before you do it so it, it evenly heats up because this is very soft over here where it's sitting in the sun. This over here in the shade, you can still see it's curled up and I can't get it to straighten out so I might have to hold that in place with my hand before we get the garage door down on it. Okay, that took exactly one tube to do three lines for this threshold. Okay, so basically I just rolled this up backwards. This is the garage side. This is the outside. Um, we'll lay this in between the marks and hopefully this will work out where I can just set it down and unroll it, keep it between the marks here. Let's see. Okay, now where it's not going to release well from the garage door pressure because the garage door is going to sit right here is back here. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that gets spread evenly. Now this part that was hard that didn't lay in the sun, I should have left it out in the sun just so it would soften as well. Of course, when it heats up in the sun, it does expand a little bit, so it's fitting a little tight now that it's heated up. So... Um, We'll get the garage door down on that though in just a minute here. Now let's get the marks lined up and we'll close the garage door. Now I'm going to go inside and push down the garage door so it closes up. The yellow line's mostly in line. A um, little bit off by like a millimeter or two here and there, but I think I'm just going to leave it. All right. It's been 24 hours. So let's see what this looks like. seems to have stayed in place you know now looking at this I do wish I had split this right here and put this further up and further up inside of here and then maybe just build up some sealant around here as well to keep it from water from encroaching around right here as well <clears throat> but I did run a silicone bead yesterday afternoon just a real thin one that I just kind of spread with my finger just to keep water from going up underneath it but right now, oh, that's really strong. I can't lift that up. Okay, and then for 24 hours, this Gorilla Heavy Duty adhesive, you know, was hard on the outside. It's still a little squishy. Um, I assume that'll harden up. I don't have any along that edge, but it's going to stay in place. Well, if I have any problems with the sealant, I'll put a follow-up video, a link at the end of this video, and let you know. Okay. That door we did the other day, this door I just did. And my notching idea was sort of a fail because you can see I notched it right on the yellow line and I put that yellow line right in line with the edge of the track right there. And that was way off. So when I closed the door, the seal was actually hitting directly on top and the seal's supposed to hit right here. So when we look up at the seal here, you can see the seal here um, runs well away from this edge. So that should have been just fine. But this door, when it gets down to the bottom for some reason, this, um, I guess there's some play here. So this door actually ends up going like this when it's down at the bottom. So anyway, I wish I had paid attention to that better. 
So I guess just see maybe what I'd do in the future because you don't know exactly where the door is going to close and end up. Um, close the door before you do anything. Draw a line directly down from the back of the seal so you know exactly where the seal's hitting and see where that ends up on the two, or at least on the two edges, see where the seal ends up. And then keep that in mind when you go to cut your piece so that the door seal itself hits in the right spot. Okay, hope this helps you guys. And uh, we'll get this one closed and let it sit up for 24 hours. And on this one that's already set up, you know, the glue's kind of sticking out. I guess I could go back and trim that off. Um, once you put your door down and your door goes down and hits this outer edge, right? Not the crown, but the outer edge and pushes it down. If it has enough downward force, um, it will disperse the glue, right? It'll help squish the glue out. So there won't be, this uh, edge won't be sticking up above the concrete. You want to make sure that this back edge isn't sticking up either. So maybe um, close the door on it and then take the butt end of a screwdriver or something or some kind of roller and then just roll it along here, some kind of hard roller. I don't know what though. Um, and then just roll it on just to make the glue gets dispersed back there. Can't really get under the edge to try to even try to pry it up. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little sealant around here just to keep water from encroaching through there. <laughs> 